Hello, my name is Julian Pascalo. I'm a member of the core team at Multiverse X. Uh, you probably know me better from the Telegram group. And first of all, before we start, I want to congratulate you already, the developers in this room. Uh, pretty impressive night you had. Um, so yeah, a big round of applause for them. <laughs> Very good. Uh, it reminds us a little bit of uh, our main at launch. We had uh, long nights there. So um, today we're going to talk a little about um, the protocol release, what it means, what it does, how it is made. And um, yeah, it's very important to have an uh, upgraded software. Yeah, so um, each part of your, uh, of your uh, components need to be upgraded, continuously upgraded. Uh, they should receive small patches. They uh, should re receive security patches, cool new features, or otherwise they will be totally abandoned. Since our mainnet release, we had around 51 uh, upgrades. Some of them were small, some of them were quite large. We had critical patches, we had um, features, a lot of new features. And yes, we reached the 15130 current mainnet release. So what is actually a release? Since we are an open source software, we rely on the GitHub uh, because all our code is there. And actually, what we call for a release is a GitHub release. So a GitHub release is just a wrapper of a, a GitHub tag that is actually a commit, a commit hash. So um, we have like several repos for the release. We have one for the binary and three for all the three public test, uh, public chains, not testnet. Okay, so um, the configuration repository, this is a, an example of the testnet, consists of a lot of configuration files, I've seen Tomal, JSON, WASM files, and a very special file there called the binary version, which contains either a commit hash, a branch, or a tag. So we can match this configuration to the binary. So each binary will receive its corresponding and matching configuration files. So it will work. Otherwise, it's very, very complicated to make them, to, to make them work. So uh, about the naming system, we have um, the mainnet that runs on the chain ID 1, as you probably know, the testnet, which runs on the chain ID T, and the devnet, which runs on the chain ID D. And we also used the, almost these kind of um, um, characters to define our releases. So for example, we have a configuration release, an example with the T from the testnet, 15130, that uses the binary V1513. Mind the two similarities between the configuration, um, the, the release uh, uh, part. So the first three um, from the configuration release is actually the binary uh, version. And the last one, we use it to make small incremental configuration only, configuration only releases. So if you want to change something in the configuration files, but we still use the binary, the same binary, we just uh, increase the last digit from the configuration um, release. So now we're going to talk about the long way from coding to actual mainnet release. So as you probably know, when we code something, we don't just put it in production. That's the worst thing we can do. Um, we actually have a few stages there. So we start with the code changes. Then we have a lot of uh, automated tests, around 11,000 only on MX uh, uh, chain go repo, uh, consisting uh, of unit test, integration test that should pass. It takes around 
seven minutes to run them all. Um, after that, we require two peer uh, colleagues to, to um, review our changes, and if they agree with us, we ask <laughs> our um, uh, quality engineer to test it on a small scale internal testnet. So it's just like a public testnet, but it's smaller. And if those tests pass, we push the changes into the testnet. So the testnet is actually the staging uh, platform for us to, to test our, uh, our new changes on the code. If the testnet survives and everything works okay, um, we started putting the changes in a special process. You might have heard of import DB process where we test the backwards compatibility. So we, we actually run all the transaction from the genesis and up until the latest blocks. And if everything is okay and we obtain exactly, exactly the same uh, results, then we can say with a certain amount of trust that the code is um, ready to be put in production. And when we put it in production, we actually started with a very small group. So that's why you might see on the Explorer page from time to time that some nodes are running a higher version of the, of the uh, software just to test and just to run alongside with the other, um, with the other nodes. So, um, sovereign shards, it is quite a buzz this day. Um, my colleagues will, uh, will um, um, inform you better about what a sovereign shard is. I'm going to tell you that when you decide to run your own shard that will be connected to uh, one of our chains, especially mainnet, a, better, a very good idea that uh, we want uh, to tell you is that you actually own also a testnet sovereign shard. Why? Because when we do a release on the testnet, you should also do the release on your own sovereign shard. So you can test the new release and make sure nothing is broken on your side. And if it's broken, you need to report us as soon as possible so we can correct them. After it enters the production, you won't be able to, uh, to execute the um, release. If you know it has a bug, up until we do the next, uh, the next one that uh, will fix uh, everything. So I prepared uh, a little guidelines just about this, uh, just about the process of releasing. If you are interested, if you want to um, have in the future um, sovereign shard, um, I, think, uh, I think this document will, uh, will help you. Thank you, and I will leave my colleague Ovidio to tell us a little bit about smart contract releases. Thanks.